So the first tip I'll pass along is you definitely want to work in the default viewport. Now I know this goes against the video that I just made about the advanced viewport saying how wonderful it was, but the, um, that all stands. But the trouble is when I do something that's heavy with Booleans, the advanced viewport really chugs. You'll see here. So you see, I've got all these transparent cutouts and that kind of stuff. And these transparent meshes kill my performance. You know, when I get up close like this, it's just everything comes to a chugging halt. And I've I fooled around with transparency options. If you turn transparency off, stuff's not that bad. Not that bad at all. But if I dare do something crazy, like what well, correct is completely out of the question. If I say fast, it's still really chuggy. But if I flip the viewport, you know, to the default renderer, you know, everything's lovely. So uh, if you're going to work with heavy Booleans, I would really recommend using the default viewport for performance reasons. So another big sticky point with mop Booleans and performance is when you have a heavy mesh like this and you want to modify the operands. So this operand here is part of my subtractive layer, you know, my initial subtractive layer. And you can see there's a bunch of operands in here, but you know, the number really doesn't matter. The problem is if I select these, I'm like, well, I want to get some kind of a, you know, a thing to stick into the mesh. Let's just grab actually these ones. So I hit the bevel tool and I wait for it to activate, then I can drag it, wait for that to respond. It's working on it, give it a second. Oh, not quite what I wanted, so drag a little further. It's just, and then it's finally done, okay. So instead of that, let me undo back. Uh, what I'll generally do is I'll just copy this mesh I'll make a new mesh item in the scene, hop over to it, work on it, pull this out about where I want it, adjust it, get everything set up, then copy this, jump back into my subtractive operand and delete the polygons that are there and paste in my new ones. That is a much smoother and, and more efficient workflow. You know, Every time you drag that mouse, the whole Boolean uh, mesh op is updating itself. And the trouble is we don't have deferred updates and I'm not sure where we're going to get them because really mop Booleans is just, is built on top of the existing mesh op architecture. So in lieu of deferred updates, that's about the fastest way that I've found to modify operands. Now this last tip might might kind of rub you the wrong way, but the way that I would uh, advise using uh, mesh ops would, or mesh op booleans would be to not use subdivision modeling or edge weighting or any of it. Uh, basically never hit the tab key because as soon as you do, you're adding, well, uh, you're adding a level of subdivision to the mesh and that whole subdivision needs to go through the Boolean pipe. So that's going to add up super quick and slow down your viewport really fast. So my suggestion would be to get used to using uh, enough geometry that you get the shapes you want uh, without having to subdivide. So for example, let's see, let's take this cube here and we'll turn it into a, a mesh op. Now, if I do a quick render on this and I zoom up, let me just make sure that my rounded edge is, uh, let's turn that up to something a little thicker so we can see it. Okay. So I'm going to subtract these cylinders from this. Now, if I render this out, there's no sub D yet. Those were 32 sided cylinders. And you can see this looks, looks plenty smooth for what I need to do. Well, you don't know what I'm trying to do, but I'll pretend that you do. That's plenty of that's plenty of, of geometry and resolution uh, combined with the uh, rounded edge shader to make that happen. Now with something like this, let's just subtract that straight up. You know, and obviously, you may have different requirements for a cubic cutout. But the key will be to take your operand, and I think we can get away with just modifying this in place because we're not using sub D. So we can add as many you know sides or segments as we want to the bevel. Do that. 
grab this and deselect that, and then we'll hit this underside with a bevel as well. And that looks lovely and smooth, and we'll render out we'll render out beautifully, and I still haven't hit that sub D key. You know, we're dealing with uh, with 900 triangles right now. If I had subdivided this, it'd be a lot more. You know, and my and my booleans are still are still performant and still modifiable in real time, uh, which is really the key. You want to optimize your ability to work in real time, you know, as opposed to getting the prettiest subdivision you can, in my opinion, anyway. And for the purposes of demonstration, you know, I went ahead and I added you know, edge weights to everything and I hit the subdivide key and everything. So we're up to about 5,000 polygons now, as opposed to the 900 we have. And if I render this out, yeah, the cylinder edge you know, is a little smoother, but overall, there's not that much difference. And depending how big this piece is going to be, that's probably not even going to matter. You could probably even use less segments. So experiment with that. Uh, challenge yourself to use mop booleans for for one prop and your challenge will be to not hit the subdivide key. Uh, don't hit that tab key and see if you can make it happen with straight geometry. Now in the course of that video you probably noticed that my mop boolean uh, assembly looked a, looks a little different from yours. Um, that's because I made an enhanced version of the mop boolean assembly uh, and I'm selling it on my gum road for five bucks. It basically reorders the operations in such a way that you can stack operations uh, as opposed to doing them in one big batch. So that fancy triangular thing you, th you saw at the start of the video, that was done with a single mop assembly, you know, as opposed to having to layer multiple, on, multiple ones on top of each other. So uh, the link will be in the description. You can check it out. But the bottom line is that these are the three big tips that help me to work faster with mop booleans. So uh, thanks for watching. If, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please go ahead and do that. Hit the bell, like the video, and I'll see you next time.